Along the Chesapeake Bay lies Baltimore, Maryland, famous for its crabs, row houses, and its stoops. Baltimore's celebrated culture of street life would be nothing if it weren't for its striking number of trees. And another thing striking about Maryland, it is now in the midst of battling an invasive pest, the emerald ash borer. Baltimore is kind of a small town. Everybody kind of knows everybody else, and everybody's so kind. It's a small city, but it really feels small, like a small town, like home. It's home. You come into a neighborhood where there are trees, and people are out. You see the dogs. You see people playing. You see people sitting under the trees, and um, you know, it's just it's just a good thing. It's much better. Street trees are really important for. A lot of reasons. I mean, you want to make sure that you have shade, um, it keeps the heat down, but it also protects you from the noise. Forest products from Maryland trees are a $4.7 billion industry, but Maryland's ash and other trees do more than just provide wood for manufacture. Ash trees are very hardy uh, as a tree. They're, they survive well in urban environments. They're great for birds nesting, they provide shade. In Maryland, green ash is one of the two species that we have most prevalently in our state, quite often in streamside settings. So when rain falls and the water crosses all kinds of different kinds of land uses, whether it's farming, pavement in cities and street, and as it moves towards the, uh, the stream or the creek, hopefully it goes through a, a streamside forest of some kind, and the forest is there to filter um, any sediments and it, the water that ends up in the creek that eventually ends up in the Chesapeake Bay is cleaner for having gone through that filtering or buffering process. And we refer to it as the last line of defense and as far as water quality goes. But Baltimore's shady tree life is threatened by yet another invasive pest. Well, the emerald ash borer first showed up in Maryland in 2003 on some infested nursery stock. It was detected by the uh, Department of Agriculture during some inspections they were doing on plant stock and we tried to retrieve all the material that had been sold, and, but we were not able to, and unfortunately, the bug came out of the, of the nursery stock eventually, and then we had a problem on the landscape. The emerald ash borer in Maryland was discovered, fortunately, the way it should have been, at a nursery by one of the uh, Maryland Department of Agriculture inspectors. Uh, that started the program. The first thing we did was try to monitor the area and try to see if we could pick up other insects that were in the area. And unfortunately, this part of Southern Maryland has uh, a quite a preponderance of green ash. And then we realized that we had our work ahead of us because what we were uh, planning on doing at the time was a take the tree out effort to remove the insect along with the tree that was infected, uh, dispose of the tree in a proper way, and then um, hope that we had stopped the uh, spread of EAB in that way. We have 14 counties that are now part of our Emerald Ash Borer Quarantine, where we're hoping that that physical barrier of the Chesapeake Bay will keep the insect from moving over to the eastern shore. The damage from the Emerald Ash Borer may change the face of Baltimore. Valerie Shane from Parks and People. Baltimore has a lot of green spaces. Compared in, in comparison to other cities, I think our city thrives on the diversity of trees that we have here. Um, so you take out one type of tree and it's absolutely going to devastate our ecosystem. Based on the recent survey work, we've estimated that Baltimore City and the surrounding area has about 6.5 million ash trees in that urban environment. And so, you know, the, the ecological benefits that those trees provide and the cost of removing those trees is about a $225 million impact. When an insect first shows up, the, the hope is that you can eradicate it and get rid of your problem. And in many cases, we're successful with that tactic. When that tactic fails, we then have to learn to live with this critter in the environment. And the best I think we could do at that point is to slow the spread, try to control it, remove trees where we can, monitor how quickly it's moving, and then work with other types of methods of controlling this insect biocontrols are what we're currently checking on now. We have a research center in Cheltenham in Southern Maryland where we're doing the, our own research. This is the headquarters. This is where we work to uh, hopefully control the emerald ash borer. We have a number of things going on here. We, we're trying to find other bugs that will eat the emerald ash borer or at least the eggs and the uh, larvae of the emerald ash borer. Uh, there's three different species we're working with and uh, we're hoping that those two slow the spread of the emerald ash borer and we're hoping the state of the science of what we understand how to control this insect will improve as time goes on. So the idea is we're trying to buy ourselves some time. If we slow the spread, hopefully the science can catch up with it. Hopefully the biocontrols can become established 
and we could have other insects like parasitic wasps helping us get the job done of controlling the outbreak. Both Maryland's officials and activists are spreading the word to educate people about so the threat. Coming out and, and helping us maintain these trees and plant the new ones, we really do appreciate it and um, all the work that Parks and People does around the city couldn't be done without the work of our generous volunteers. It's a small, little small green beetle, um, very shiny. Um, but the way that we can prevent um, it devastating our trees here is to um, remember not to move around firewood. Buy it where you use it and uh, know the source if you're buying it at home, know where you're getting it from. Our number one best pest detection system that we have in Maryland are the citizens of Maryland. So if you see an insect that you've never seen before, it has a metallic green color, it came out of a hole that looks like a D-shaped little hole in the side of the tree, the tree starts to seem like it's not very healthy. Um, you need to call uh, some aspect of uh, Maryland state government, either the Department of Natural Resources or the Department of Agriculture, so we can come out and confirm the suspicions that we have emerald ash borer. The fight in Maryland against the emerald ash borer is in a new phase. Monitoring, biocontrols, but most importantly, people are the lines of defense the state is drawing. In Baltimore's battle against the bug, they're using every tool in the shed to keep the beetle from spreading. And they're looking into the future to see what scientists may be able to do to stop it someday. Inspecting incoming cargo, tree surveys in our communities, and quick actions after a new pest is spotted, these are all ways the government's working to prevent the arrival, establishment, and spread of forest pests citizens have the greatest power to protect trees in their community. Keep an eye out for bugs you don't recognize. Only buy firewood where you will burn it. And always dispose of brush and other yard waste properly. Don't move firewood. Support efforts to control and eradicate pests in your area. Our world won't slow down, but with your help, our treasured trees and forests will thrive long into the future.